My name is Diego Rigoyen. This is my co-host Hatshepsut, and today's activity is a puppet. Check out this puppet I made. Yeah, it's a falcon puppet. See how he moves his wings and moves his head. So you guys are going to be making a puppet kind of like this one. Super fun to play with once it's done. And maybe you can do a little puppet show for your family at home if you'd like to. That would be so cool. And if you do that, make sure to send us some pictures so we can see what they look like. Yeah, send us pictures. I want to see what it looks like too. So much fun. I can hardly stop playing with it. So for today's activity, we need three or four pieces of construction paper. It all depends how big you want to make your puppet. You can make the body really big. You can make the head really big. You can make the wings really big. So three to four pieces of construction paper will work just fine. You're going to need at least three kinds of sticks. So uh, we're using just skewers here, kind of similar to what you would use on a kebab, but you can use popsicle sticks if they're big enough, uh, or even pencils if you don't have any kinds of sticks. You can just use uh, some pencils and that would work just fine. You're gonna need some uh, decorative materials, so markers, color pencils, a pencil to draw things out ahead of time so that you can decorate your puppet, and then you're gonna need some string and you're also going to need some tape or hot glue if you have hot glue. So if you are using hot glue, make sure that you have your parent or uh, an adult present so that they can help you work on this project. And I believe that's all to get things started on this puppet project. So without further ado, let's jump to the overhead camera and work on our puppet. Okay, for this project, we're going to need two sheets of construction paper. They don't have to be the same color. They can if they, if you want them to be. Then we will need three kinds of sticks. Uh, we have skewers here. You could probably use long popsicle sticks if you want to. Um, the bigger the sticks, the bigger you can make your drawings. Then you will need either hot glue or you can use masking tape if you do not have hot glue. Hot glue is a little bit better, but the masking tape works just as well. And then you're also gonna need some scissors and some string. Any kind of string will do. Yarn, hemp rope, anything that you have. And then the last thing you will need are some markers or color pencils or something that you would like to use to decorate your work. So we're going to start off with a pencil and we're going to create the shape of Horus. So Horus is kind of like a big oval and don't worry if you don't get it perfect on your first try. And kind of go around till you have a nice oval. And then we're going to create kind of like a fan on the bottom. And this is the tail of the bird. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's a nice big oval. And I think it's a little bit easier to decorate it before you cut it out. So we'll decorate it first. And we're gonna add some jewelry around his neck. So I think that looked pretty cool. Maybe we'll go like this. Some neck jewelry. Okay, very nice. Also, before I forget, I'm going to just go ahead and trace these lines in a darker color so that you can see the shapes that I'm talking about. And we have this nice oval for the body. And then we have this tail, kind of looks like a fan. And that will be the body of our hawk horse. So we have the jewelry and we're going to do several bands of jewelry. I 
think that's pretty good. So then we can use different colors. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of red. And we can just do patterns for our different types of jewelry. So I think I'm gonna start off with some triangles. Okay, that's our first one. And then for the next pattern, I think I'm gonna do some longer ovals, maybe in this orange color. I think that looks pretty good. Now you don't have to copy exactly what I'm doing. You can do whatever pattern you want. So if you know some really cool patterns, I highly recommend that you do those. I'm just gonna keep it simple for you guys. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then last but not least, I'd like to add some diamonds in here. Looking at it, I'd like to make these separating lines a little bit thicker. So you can do this too if you want to. I think that looks pretty good. I, think I might add a little bit more here. Now we're gonna add some feathers to our our bird, our hawk. I'm gonna start with some really big feathers. And then as we get down towards the bottom, we'll make some smaller ones. Some, some legs, some hawk talons, maybe something like this, some claws, those are claws, okay, these are some hawk talons. And we're going to color them in so that you can see them. Okay. It's okay that they're not the same size. So we don't worry too much about it. And then here on the tail, we're going to add some big feathers. Big feather tails. Something like this. Details in there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I like that. So we have the body done, really basic. And now we're going to do the head. And the head is going to be a different color. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw the face. So the face is going to be profile, which means it's going to be sideways. So we're going to have the, let's draw the outline of the head, line of the head. He's gonna be wearing a headdress, just like the Egyptians, because it's not just a falcon, it's Horus. So the shape of the head is kind of like a backwards G. Can you see it? And if you wanted to, you could do it the other way around so that he's looking this way. So then here, we're gonna draw our beak. 
and then the beak's gonna come inside a little bit. And then his chin is gonna come down like this. And then on this side, we're going to match this part here for the other side of the headdress. So that's kind of the shape of the head, and I'm going to do it in a marker now so you can see it. So you see the backwards G there? And then out here is the last part of the headdress. And then the beak kind of comes inside the face. And then we're going to have the eye here. I want to add a little bit of orange around this part of the eye. Okay, that's looking good already. And then, I think I might even do this in blue. I'm going to add this pattern around the eye. Just to add a little bit of interest. And then up, and as it goes up, it's going to kind of create these spikes. And then it's going to come back around and touch there. So you see that shape around the eye, and then we can just kind of color that in. Maybe align the orange circle, and then we can color in the rest of the area. Okay, now we have the eye done. Now, if you have a white color pencil, you can color this area of the face white because the hawk has a white face. So there is that. Now we're going to just color in the beak so that it's all black. And your beak can be whatever color you want. I think the black looks good. And then we're just going to do some nice pattern designs on the headdress. So this is all the Egyptian headdress. And you can really do whatever pattern design you want. You don't have to copy me. I like that. Now for the next pattern, I think I'm just going to kind of do some stripes down like this. Good. And then I'm going to use blue still, but I'm going to use a color pencil blue and fill in the sides there. See how that kind of creates a different texture than the marker? Add some nice depth. So mixing those two mediums together looks pretty good, I think. So I'm going to do that. And now we're going to do kind of like some shading in the back here. Something a little bit darker. And then we kind of want to do some triangles for depth here. But they're not just triangles, they're kind of like line triangles. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll do one more here. Almost like ripples in water. I think that adds some nice texture. And then we'll do some of the lines here. Add some depth. take our blue and again just color that area in. Okay, so now we have that done. Now we can work on two more things and that is our wings. So again we're going to take out our pencil what we're going to do is we're going to draw a line across the paper like this. And then we're going to do a half circle from this point 
all the way to the other side. And we can try to make it even on both sides. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And then we're going to divide it in half. So now that's going to be our wings. Alright, so this is the shape that we're looking for in our wings. And you can make your wings bigger if you want, wanted to or you had more paper. But because I have limited size paper, that's how big they're going to be. So, uh, at this point, we're actually going to start cutting out all of these. So now we have our head and our tail. And now we need to do something with our wings. So what we can do now is create some pattern of feathers on our wings like this. And then we can go straight from here and then again down like this. And then straight from here, down, straight, and then down. You see our feathers kind of run sideways here. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. Okay, so now we have our feathers. We can, we're going to cut this in half. Okay, and then what we can do to make it look a little bit cooler is just cut out the little details on the feathers. Those wings are looking pretty good. Okay, let's do the other ones. So now we have all our wings. The next step, we're going to fold them just about to there. So like less, about half an inch you're going to fold it. And then we're going to fold it on top of itself, kind of like an accordion. So you see how it's zigzagging there? So we're going to keep folding it like that till we're done. We're going to create one more piece using our scrap paper. And we want this piece to be about half an inch thick. You don't have to measure it out or anything. Just about that thick. And then we want it to be about as tall as the head of your animal, your hawk here. So we're going to cut it right there. And then again, we're going to do some accordion folding. Okay, so now we have all of our pieces. Okay, at this point, you can get your hot glue ready. Now make sure if you're using hot glue that you're with an adult. If you don't have hot glue, you can use masking tape. You have two options, and I'll show you both. Okay, so if you don't have any hot glue, what you can do so you're going to tape your wings to the back with your masking tape. You're going to tape your wings. 
close as you can to the edge there. And then the other set opposite. And then we're going to attach the head to this piece here. So we're going to take this piece first, right there. Then next, we're going to take the neck part to the body. Never use too much tape, so if you need more tape, just go ahead and stick it on there. So now you kind of have this loose bobble head, and, and the wings. So next, we're going to take one of our sticks. So I have two sticks that are the same size, so I'm going to set those aside. And then the last stick, we're gonna attach to the back of the body. And we're gonna tape it here towards the top. Piece across like this. So next we need to work with our skewers and we're going to make a cross out of them. And this is where hot glue is best. So if you have hot glue, you can hot glue the two skewers together. Okay. So now we have our skewers attached there. Then just for some extra security, we're going to take a little piece of string. sides. And then this just ensures that our cross shape stays across and it's nice and strong. And then at the very end you can take your other little piece string and tie it together. And if you want you can add more hot glue because hot glue is fun. Now we're going to take more string and we want we're going to need four pieces of string. We need one that's a little bit shorter than the rest. I would say about six inches is good. So I'm just gonna estimate six inches. You can measure it out if you want to be exact. There's our six inches. And then we want two pieces of string that are exactly the same length at about nine inches. So to make sure they're the same length, I just take a longer piece of string and then I fold it in half. And then once it's folded in half, I just Cut it to the fold point. And now I have two the same length. And then we're going to need the last piece of string that is almost the same as the other ones, but it doesn't have to be exactly the same. So if you didn't have uh, masking tape, you could use hot glue here. But if you don't have hot glue, you can use masking tape. And here, if you don't have hot glue, you can just tie this with string uh, really tight. 
and that should work just fine too. Now we're going to take our shortest string and tie it to the front. And then if you have hot glue, you can add a little bit of hot glue there so that it stays. Now we're going to take the two that are the same and tie them to each side. And if you don't have hot glue, you can add tape over the top just to make sure it stays. Or you can tie a really good knot and add a little bit of hot glue. Take my other string that's the same, tie it to the opposite side. Okay, so I have three, and then the last one will tie over here. Okay, so now we have all four sides tied. Now we're going to attach the strings to the back. So the very top string is going to be attached to the head. Now this is where the hot glue works best, but if you don't have hot glue, you can just use masking tape for this part. So like I said, if you didn't have the hot glue, you could just get some tape and tape the string to the back of the head, just like that. The hot glue is a little bit more secure though. Now we're going to take one string and attach it to the outside of the wings. And you're gonna make sure that it's the right string. So left string goes to the left wing. And then the last string here, this back one is gonna go in the middle of the back. So kind of towards the upper middle. Not too low. I would do it right around the area where we tape the skewer. And then you'll just wait a moment for all your glue to dry. If you didn't use glue and just used tape, then you don't need to wait. Once that's done, you have this stick in the back so that you can hold it. Woohoo! Woohoo! This is a puppet! Woohoo! I'm a bird! I'm flying away! Flying away! Flying away! Yeehaw! Puppet! Okay, that's enough of that. Hello, my name is Brian Kramer. I am a research Egyptologist at the Robert and Francis Fullerton Museum of Art on the California State University San Bernardino campus. And I'm going to tell you today about the myth of Horus uh, and mention Osiris and Seth and Isis who are all wrapped up in this story. So you may be viewing this as part of the Kids Discover Ancient Egypt workshop in which you had the opportunity to make a puppet of the god Horus as a falcon. Now, Horus is extremely important to understand um, the idea of Egyptian kingship. Every ancient Egyptian king was a representation of Horus. He's called Horus in certain circumstances. Um, he's the god of kingship. And the way that Horus became king is the whole story of him and the other gods I mentioned. 
In order to understand the story, you have to know who this guy is first. This is the god Osiris, who is represented as an ancient Egyptian king. Osiris was the father of Horus, and he was king of Egypt. And he had a brother named Seth. And Seth did not like the fact that Osiris was the king of Egypt and killed him. And we have several versions of this story. We don't, don't see the same um, version every time. Seth destroyed his body somehow and threw it into the Nile. And Horus, who may or may not have been born at that point, had to go into hiding in any case as a child. And his mother, whose name was Isis, hid him from his uncle, his evil uncle Seth. And we have an image over here of Isis and Horus that you may see in many other places and in other museums. In the middle of this case, there's a, an image of Isis who is uh, giving milk to Horus as a, as a baby. Um, and on Horus's head is a little snake that is part of the crown of Egypt. He's being represented as a king even at this young age. In the myths about Horus, he had to uh, undergo a process of growing up in hiding so that um, Seth and his followers wouldn't hurt him and, and um, prevent him from becoming the rightful king of Egypt. So Isis, using her magic, uh, she was a very powerful magician, was able to keep away from Horus uh, snakes, scorpions, and other foul things that may hurt him when he was a child uh, in the swamps of the Delta. Horus eventually came of age. He grew up and he um, presented himself to the court of the ancient Egyptian gods, which was presided over by the god Re, the sun god. And he said, I am the true son of Osiris. I should be king of Egypt. And Seth, um, contested his, his legitimacy. He claimed he was, a, he was uh, not really Osiris' son, and he claimed that since he was older anyway, he should be the king of Egypt. And so there was a series of battles and conflicts between, Osir between Horus and Seth. They actually fought it out in several cases. Um, Seth managed to rip the eye of Horus out of his head at one point. And uh, in doing that, um, severely hurt Horus, naturally, but the god of magic Thoth was able to heal the eye and, and put it together again. And the Egyptians actually uh, have images of the eye of Horus, which they used in uh, a lot of um, mummies as amulets or as, as things painted on, on coffins. Um, it's this line of uh, eyes on the top of, of this case and the necklace on the top are each an image of the Eye of Horus. The Eye of Horus has a very characteristic um, uh, design. It has a little uh, like teardrop thing coming down from the top and then this little tail coming uh, from the inside of the, the pupil. Um, we'll see another version of that. It's, it's, it looks very similar to the Eye of the Cheetah. Um, but that's characteristic for the Eye of Horus. And so that represents as a symbol to the ancient Egyptians, the idea of being able to fix something that's broken severely um, using magic. And so they used it as a symbol of uh, making broken things whole again, like dead people. So when Horus uh, came of age, he fought his uncle Seth and um, eventually, they reached an agreement, and that was uh, that Seth would have part of Egypt or, or the foreign countries, and um, Horus would have another part of Egypt or all of Egypt. It's a different and different versions of the story. And they eventually reached a, 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 an agreement. Uh, Horus uh, became the legitimate king, and Seth got the extra bits uh, of the country that people didn't really want or Seth was then allowed to serve a role as a protector for the sun god as he moves around the sky. So everyone in the end uh, was at least satisfied um, in this family fight. So here in, in this case, we have a, a set of mummies of animals 
Um, mummifying animals in ancient Egypt was, was a huge business. People did it for at least a thousand years and they, did, they made millions of animal mummies. And one of the, the types of animals that they used frequently were falcons. Uh, and that's because falcons were an image of the god Horus. You can see on the, the face of this falcon mummy on, inscribed on the two sides are versions of that special eye of Horus. You can actually see falcons with this kind of eye um, in Egypt. And that's the eye of, of Horus um, represented in this way. Um, and there are actually texts that are found uh, either inscribed on these mummies or in on the, uh, the, the door that they put over their tombs that call them the Horus, Horus the Falcon, so-and-so. So every uh, falcon mummy was actually recognized to be a version of the god Horus. And falcon mummies, you may find falcon mummies throughout ancient Egyptian religion. Uh, the sun god Ray has a falcon's head too. And what the commonality among these kinds of gods is that they're all gods of the sky. Horus, the name Horus actually means he who is above. And he's a very old god from ancient Egypt referring to the sky. Um, so the Egyptians kind of elevated him as, as the most important god. He's the god of kingship because he's the one above everyone. He looks down on everyone else. So in making a puppet of the god Horus, making him into a falcon is kind of the quintessential, the, the, the most um, basic form that he could take.